Hey gang, in today's Electronics and More video, I'll be showing you how to make an exact duplicate of virtually any key, including do not copy keys and high security keys. In order to duplicate the key, you will need access to the key for five minutes and have your supplies ready. Unlike all the videos on YouTube, which show very crude ways of duplicating simple pin tumbler keys by using a photograph, soot from a flame, or ink from a marker to duplicate the key profile with tape, which would then be cut from a piece of sheet metal. This particular method is not shown anywhere on YouTube or other places online. To get started, I'm going to show you the supplies you will need. Now besides the key that you're going to copy, you're going to need some fast setting dental alginate. It's a powder like you see inside this container. Push that to the side. You're also going to need a small bowl or cup with a mixing spoon. Another small cup like you see here, this is from cough medicine. A small prescription drug plastic bottle like you see right here. This has a hole cut in the bottom of it. That allows me to get my finger inside. Pull tab from a can of soda. A Q-tip. A twist tie. This is from a loaf of bread. Clear tape that's wide, it could be duct tape, that'll work also. Utility knife blade. Two part epoxy, this is 1500 PSI. Clear, low viscosity, you can use gray also. And the epoxy sets in five minutes. You're also going to need a small cutter, right there. A 1 16th inch OD brass tube, one foot long. You could pick that up at a hobby store. It's sold in a little rack by K&S Metals. And lastly, you're going to need a syringe. This is a 3cc, 3ml, and this is the same tube that you see right down here. This little section that's black is a piece of heat shrink tubing. I'm going to show you in a minute how to set up the syringe, as you see here, with the heat shrink tubing. Okay, now to set up the syringe, you're going to take the 1 16th inch tubing, like you see right here, and in order to cut it, the easiest way that I found is you take a utility knife blade, in this case I'll go right in the center, push down, roll it back and forth, and you don't have to go all the way through the tube like I just did. You can go partially and it will snap nice and clean. Once the tubing's been cut, you're going to take the utility knife blade, reach inside, make sure you get rid of that burr on both ends. Once that's done, you're going to take some sandpaper, and you're going to go like this. Make sure there's no little edge sticking out on top. Go all the way around, both sides. Then you're going to take this tubing over here, slide it over, heat it up with a match, let it shrink, allow it to cool, and then you're going to take the end of the syringe, find the drill bit that's slightly smaller than the diameter of the tube with the heat shrink tubing, ream it out, and then you're going to wiggle this until it goes all the way in nice and snug. Once it's in, it will not leak. The first thing you're going to do is take the pill bottle with the hole in the center of the bottom of it, and you're going to put a piece of clear tape over the bottom. Okay, just go like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure it's on there. And sit that down. Okay, the next step we're going to be mixing up enough alginate to pour inside this tube. Now it's very important that when you do this, the level of the alginate has to be high enough to cover up the key at least a little above where it ends. So I would go up to the top of this writing here. So I put that in, which means the level of the alginate would have to go up to the top of this line here. If you make it too low, the key will not work properly. Now in order to mix the alginate, we're going to put this to the side. Take the alginate and you're going to tumble it around for a minute. Now this is not going to be mixed like you're taking a dental impression. When you take a dental impression, you want it to be smooth but thick. In this case, it's going to be very smooth and thin. So we're going to take this cup here. And I'm going to place a little bit of water in the bottom and then I'm going to add alginate to this cup. It's a very good idea to always start with the water because if you put the powder first, 
there's always a chance that the bottom will remain dry and unmixed. So put water in first and then dump the alginate on top. Mix it up really good. Use the back of the spoon, press it against the side of the cup, work it in, and make sure all the alginate is mixed into a very smooth but flowable consistency. You must work quick. Once it's mixed, you have to pour it right into this container quickly and then get ready to insert the key. Water is now in the bottom of the cup. This is what the alginate looks like. Fine powder. It's almost the consistency of flour. And like I said, you have to work quick. So I put it in. Let me mix it off screen. It will be easier for me to look at what I'm doing. And I can add more water if necessary. Perfect. Go like that. Now I'm going to take the key, insert it all the way in, move it up and down, make sure it's coated. Tap, make sure there's no voids. All right, you're going to let that sit for five minutes. And then once it's set, I'll show you the next step. Okay, once it had time to set up for five minutes, you could remove the key from the alginate and the key can go back where it came from. So to do that, you're going to hold it here, pull off the tape, and you're going to push your finger in the middle of the bottom and the entire thing will slide out. Okay, perfection. The next step, you're going to take the key and find out which way is the side of the key and you can see the key is this way so you're going to get the razor you're going to make a cut right into the side of that key go straight down like this alright pull it out you're going to then spread this mold open very very carefully and remove the key try and wiggle it up there it is it came out perfect take this Reinsert, push it all the way back down, okay. At this point the key can go back to where you got it from. Now the next step, what you're going to do is on the very top here, you want to cut this at a little bit of a bevel, don't let it fall inside, go like that. Cut this like a bevel, good. Excellent. Make sure it comes out and not fall in. There we go. You can see how nice it looks on the inside there. So let me just cut a little bit of this away. I can trim this off. There's no reason to have this sticking out. Let me just go a little wider on this end. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now, what's going to happen, I want to take a wire, and I'm going to use a very, very thin wire as a reinforcement once this is injected with the epoxy resin. So you're going to take the wire from the bread tie, we're going to strip off the insulation on it, just Go like that. Get it all nice and stripped because this is going to go all the way down into the center. And the purpose of that, in the event, and it's unlikely because this is 1500 PSI epoxy resin, that if this ever broke while it's inside the keyway, you'll be able to still pull the key out even though it's broken. If you don't use this wire, what can happen? Parts of the key can break off and stay inside the keyway. You're going to have to get a broken key extractor to get it out or disassemble the lock. Once the wire has been stripped, you're going to get an idea of how deep that keyway is right there. This part here is going to be going right inside this little groove area. And that's going to add some strength to the end of the key. So you want to take this wire and you want to bend it over the bottom here so when you push it into position with the epoxy, it'll all be one. Let me see the positioning. That would go there. Alright. So let me bend a little hook on that wire. Okay. Bent that little hook. But I'm going to also do a, a 
quick wrap right here. Two turns. Done. So now that'll go all the way down the key. We trim that off with the wire cutters. Cut it as close as you can get it. Perfect. So now what's going to happen when the epoxy's in, I'm going to drop it all the way down until it bottoms out just like that. So take this and put this to the side. You're going to take this epoxy resin, squeeze a fair amount into this cup. I'd probably go up to here. And then once it's mixed, you don't want to go like this when you mix because you're going to introduce air into the epoxy. Do a nice slow mix, get it thoroughly mixed together. Once it's mixed, the next step you're going to pull the plunger out. And then you're going to take the epoxy resin and pour it all the way in. Once it's poured in, you can put this back in on the end, and then you're going to make sure there's no air inside. Let the air bubble rise to the top. Push the syringe until the air is gone and it finds its way out the tube, and you only have epoxy flowing out. Once it's at that point, you're good to go. Then you're going to go all the way inside the keyway. Very careful. Don't damage anything. Just let it fall to the bottom. Right there's the bottom. And then you're going to inject. And as you're injecting, you're slowly going to rise up. Let the liquid inside the keyhole rise up, you'll see it, and slowly keep pulling the needle further out. Keep going, keep going all the way to the top until you see a nice puddle of epoxy inside this area. Once the puddle is inside this area, slightly bubbled over, then you can take this and drop it all the way down carefully. Let me mix it up, come right back. Now it's very important that you do pour the mold as soon as possible. If you don't, take a paper towel that's damp, wrap it around this entire thing, place it in a Ziploc bag, and then at least do it within a few hours or the following day. If you go longer than 24 hours, this may start to shrink a little bit and it's not a good idea. So do it as soon as possible. Oh, that should be more than enough. Once that's done, put the cap back on. This is five minute epoxy, so you gotta realize this will set up quickly. And remember, introduce as little air as possible into the epoxy. Let me move this off the field of view of the camera because I'm going to have to pour it inside the syringe. Okay. Right here, you can see it flowing out nicely. Let me go into the keyhole. And let me inject. Steady pressure. Keep it level. And it's coming up to the top right now. Pull out slowly. Okay, now you could tap it a little bit if you want, very, very lightly. Let me take this wire with this, insert it. Should go in very easy. Yep. Now that it's in, let me put a little bit more epoxy over the area, over the center of it. Let me take another look. Okay, I'm going to allow this to sit now. It looks pretty good. I'll wait one hour and then remove it from the mold. Okay, even though it says it's fully cured in one hour, I waited two hours. Let's open this up. See the very nice shape of the key in there. Look at that, that is beautiful. Pull the key out. And that is perfection there.
right over here you can see when the button pushes up when I unlock the door. Here's the key. Insert it and turn. Simple as that.